Good morning, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Can you please raise your hands if you can't hear me? Okay, I see there are still some attendees coming through. So let's just give about a minute or two. Okay, looks like most attendees are there. So I think we can start. Okay, good morning everyone. For those who previously attended history, you will know me by now. For the new people, my name is Ilse Stickling. I'm then the Education Specialist at IMPAC for History and Geography. And I'm going to present um, to you today the main events or the most important events of the French Revolution. Right, if you hear another voice, um, it is my colleague Kimberly Britz, who is just assisting me um, throughout this um, session. So um, if you hear another voice, just be aware that there is someone else also as an organizer. Right, if you are struggling to hear me, please make sure that your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up. Remember that during the session, you will automatically be muted when joining the session. Then I'm going to ask you if you have any questions that you please put it in the question box on the right hand side of your screen. I'm going to talk a lot during the session, so then we can always extract the questions and then give you answers a bit later back. Then on the right hand side of your screen, there's also a place where you can download the presentations. Please take note that it is also available in Afrikaans for the Afrikaans learners. And also note that I'm going to translate some of the difficult concepts or so forth also in Afrikaans during the session for the Afrikaans learners. And then please remember to send us your questions. So if it is history or content related or so forth, please type it into the box. And then guys, if you are struggling for some reason to download the presentations, just please leave your email address um, in the question box so that we can send you then the presentations if you are unable to download the presentations. Okay, then I think we can start. Right, now, if we look at some of the important events of the French Revolution, the first one that we're going to look at is the calling of the Estate General. In Afrikaans, we call that the Staten General. Then we're going to look at the tennis court oath, the tennis born yet, the storming of the Bastille, 
Dus die bestorming van die Bastille, en dit is ook gezien als de immediate cause van de French Revolution, de onmiddellijke oorzaak van die Franse Revolutie. Dan ook de abolitie van feudal rights en privileges, de afschaffing van feudale rechten en voorrechten, de declaratie van de rechten van man, de verklaring van de rechten van mensen. Then just some of the important events continuing, a removal of the royal family from Versailles, the verwijdering van die koninklijke familie van Versailles, the flight to Berines, the flight to Berines, sorry, I don't speak French, so I hope I pronounced that correctly, the execution of the king, the terrasselling van die koning, the reign of terror and the execution of the queen, Dit is dan in Afrikaans die skrikbewind en dan die terechtstelling van die koningin. Right, now let's start with the calling of the estate general. Now if you remember back to my previous presentation, we looked at some of the important causes of the French Revolution. And one of the causes was the political situation of France. And um, with the political situation of France, the king, King Louis XVI, we call him um, Koning Louis the, ach, Lodewijk XVI in Afrikaans, he was not really a ruler by heart. Um, he did not want to be king. He was a weak leader. And this caused a lot of general problems within the French society because the people felt that his um, mindset was with his hunting parties, with doing other things, wasting money, etc. And he was not really involved in the problems, um, trying to solve the problems of France or uh, trying to address the issues of the people. So in 1789, the Minister of Finance was Cologne. There were a few um, ministers of finance that followed him, proposed a general idea for all these states, and that was that all these states should pay taxes. Now you can imagine that the second estate as well as the first estate would um, not be happy with these taxes because they have been exempted from taxes um, for a very, very long time, right? This was obviously then rejected by the assembly of notables, the very important people in society, mostly comprising of the first and the second state. They rejected the tax, and then obviously Cologne lost his position as the Minister of Finance. Then the Parliament of France also rejected this, and this was then dismissed by the king himself. Remember that King Louis XVI was an absolute ruler, so he did not really need the advice of other people. He could make decisions on his own, and then people had to stick with these decisions. But then again, please take note that King Louis XVI was not a good ruler and would then have to take other measures to deal with the problems. Goed, so in, in Afrikaans is het maar net die, die roeping van die Staten-Generaal. In 1789 het die minister van Finansies ba basis voorgestel dat allemaal een sekere uh, belasting moet betaal door al die, die stande. En dit het nogal conflict veroorzaak, want die eerste en die tweede stand uh, was vrij geskel van belasting in vorige jare en dit was nie vir hulle oplossing gewees nie. Goed, so dit is um, dan van die hand gewaas door belangrike mense, die vergadering van belangrike mense en so aan. En um, die parlement van Frankrijk het ook hierdie idee dan verwerp en die koning het dit dan self ook um, laat verweider. Goed, onthou dat koning Lodewijk die 16e was een absolute heerser gewees. Met ander woorde, hy het nie nodig gehad om raad en advies te vraag van ander mense nie, hy kon besluit op sy eie maak en dan moes die mense by daar die besluit te geblei het. Okay, continuing with the calling of the States General, violence broke out all over France in support of the Parliament of France. And then the King decided to call the States General. Now, this is a very, very important event because King Louis XVI is an absolute ruler. 
he doesn't need democracy in his country he doesn't need the advice of anyone but he is so insecure he doesn't know what to do so he decides then to call the states general and this is now for the very first time in 175 years that he actually calls a, a body to actually um find a solution to this problem because he doesn't know how to deal with this issue right now the question remains that of voting the 30 state made up 98 percent of the population and the 30 state in the is a uh, state general basically wanted a double representation so now the king had to decide was the voting going to be done by head counts or um estate voting now you can imagine if the third estate has represents 98 percent of the population and they then want a double representation then obviously it will be in the favor of the third estate so this is another difficult decision that the king needs to make right so for the Afrikaanse mense for the eerste keer in 175 jaar was die koning so desperaat dat hy nie geweet het wat er besluite om te neem nie en hy moes dan nou maar die state generaal by mekaar roep vir die eerste keer in 175 jaar. Nou dit behels dat amal in die drie stande dan stemrecht het wat hulle by mekaar kom en um, dit het nou een nieuwe kwestie veroorzaak. So gaan die koning toelaat dat stemreg gebeur volgens koptellings of gaan dit dan wees dat die verskillende stande gaan stem. Nou die derde stand het 98% van die bevolking um, uitgemaak. So mens kan dink en had dan nie die derde stand ook um, gevra dat hulle een dubbel verteenwoordiger verteenwoordiging kan kry by die state generaal en um, dit sal in hulle gins ook dan tel en dit is een een ander probleem waarmee die eerste twee stande een probleem sal hee en waarmee die koning gevolglik ook een probleem sal hee. Right, the tennis court oath. On the 4th of May 1789, the Estates General met in Paris. Now the three Estates met in three separate halls in the Palace of Versailles. Towards the end of May, the third estate decided to invite the other two estates to join them. Right. So this is now within the estates general. It's sort of a, not really, but in terms like a democratic thing that's happening, that all three estates are in one building. They are meeting, they are coming up with solutions and ideas and all of those things. And then the 30 state, remember there were a lot of educated people in the 30 state and um, they decided to invite the other two states to join them so that they can have a, a bigger representation of ideas and so forth, right? So in a, in a sense, this is also very historical if you look at the feudal history of France. Now, the 30 state was represent, represented the overwhelming majority of the population. Now, it also changed its name to the National Assembly. So it was not the Estates General anymore. They changed the name to the National Assembly. And the 30, right, uh, the 30 state had the right to do that because they comprised of the majority of people representing the majority of people um, in this estate general so the estate general now became the national assembly the clergy as a whole remember the clergy is the first estate in afrikaans die kleris hulle was die eerste stand gewees onthou dit was die rooms katholieke kerk right the roman catholic church now they decided as a whole to join the third estate and again this is already revolutionary Revolutionary in a sense of just talks that took place, um, joining together, um, giving ideas, being polite with one another, um, all of this achieved without any bloodshed so far. Good. Um, so the Staten General in Paris ontmoet, 
die drie standen het in verschillende salen ontmoet en die derde stand waar die meeste van die bevolking verteenwoordig het, het dan besluit, hulle wil die ander twee stande ook nooi, so dat hulle meer idees kan kry en voor een dag en hulle geweldige samenwerking kan wees, want dit is toch wat hulle wou gehad het. En onthoud dat baie lede van die derde stand was geleerde mense gewees. Right. And another thing that you can remember there is that many of these people were involved in the American War of Independence as well as soldiers and so forth. And they heard a lot of information. And this is where they got the ideas of liberty and equality and so forth. Um, so people already knew about these ideas. And they wanted to, to share these ideas as well within this meeting. Good. So the state general had then later a name for other national vergadering too. En die kleer is, wat die eerste stand is, en dit was die Rooms-Katholieke Kerk, het besluit dan om aan te sluit by die derde stand. En weer eens, hierdie was een geweldige revolutionaire stap gewees, um, want hierdie het plaasgevind sonder dat enige bloedverspil is, of so, of so meer. Right, the tennis court is continuing. On the 20th of June 1789, when the third estate arrived to meet, um, the doors were locked on the king's orders. Now, obviously, this became too much for the king. The, cler the clergy joining the third estate looks like the third estate is um, getting their way. Um, and this is too much for the king because the king now is thinking that he's losing a lot of power. Um, he's an absolute ruler. But, um, you know, when he decided to call the Estates General, he did not think this was going to be the outcome. This was going to happen. Right. So in some sense, to try and keep his position of power, he decided to lock the door so that the people could not meet. Its members then decided to go to a nearby tennis court, indoor tennis court. And then they all took an oath not to dismantle until a constitution for France was established. Now, of the 577 members that attended, there was only one that refused. Right. Again, this is very revolutionary because this is now in direct defiance of the king. They ignored the locked doors. They decided to go to a nearby tennis court and then obviously to continue their discussions. And then obviously also not to leave until there is a constitution. Again, they got these ideas from the American Revolution. Remember, educated people in the group, former um, soldiers that also was involved in the American um, War of Independence. So a lot of new ideas um, that was taking place. Goed, so op die 20ste juni 1789 het die derde stand dan by die paleis aangekom en daar was die dere gesluit gewees en dit was een poging van die koning om sy macht te probeer behou. Want ek dink nie die koning het gedink toe hy die derde of die, die stand state generaal geroep het, laat dit die uitkomst gaan wees nie. En um, om sy macht te probeer behou het hy die dere sy meer gesluit Maar die derde stand het dan net besluit, hulle skuif oor na een nabijgelee binnenshuise tennisbaan, waar hulle dan verder gaan vergader. En hierso was daar 577 lede, wat um, dan ook besluit het dat hulle nie gaan loop voordat daar nie een grondwet ontwerp is of aanvaar is um, vir die mense van Frankrijk nie. Nou, van die 577 lede was daar net een persoon wat het nie aanvaar het nie. En hierdie gebeurtenis op zichzelf was baie revolutionair geweest, want dit was een directe teenstand met die koning geweest. wat eigenlijk baie gevaarlik is vir die tijd, as jy opstaan tegen een absolute heerser. Right, the king's further attempt to threaten the third estate then failed, and more clergy and nobles joined them. Eventually, the king accepted this and then ordered the other two estates to join the third estate. No bloodshed achievements. Good. Weer eens baie revolutionair van die koning se pogings om een bedreiging in te hou vir die derde stand het nie geslaag nie. En 
meer kleer is en meer van die tweede stand van die adelik is, het ook um, hulle self aangesluit, um, totdat die koning besluit het, maar nou moet al twee stande verplig wees om by die derde stand aan te sluit. Um, en weer eens revolutionair, want geen bloedvergieting het so ver plaasgevind nie, en hierdie is geweldige um, vooruitgang wat reeds gemaakt is. Right, another important event of the French Revolution then is the storming of the Bastille. Now in the background of the slide, very, very lightly, you will see that there's the building of the Bastille. It almost looks like a medieval castle. Right, now the king fired the Minister of Finance and remember that there were now a number of um, Ministers of Finance and sent mass troops around Paris to try and gain control again and strengthen his position. So every time that the king gives in, he actually regrets his actions and he feels that he's losing power. And um, he's also scared that he's going to lose his position in society. So um, obviously he now tries with other attempts to, to try and counteract his former decisions. So this time he would now send troops to Paris, to surround Paris, um, just to protect his position as such, but also to give a very um, strong message to the 30 state that he's still in charge and he can still do what he pleases to do. Okay. So the bestorming van the Bastille, the Koning had um, the Minister of Finance, so there was now already a few times, every time as someone gets a call, then he's um, afgedank or what ook al. And um, the Koning had every time massa soldiers or troops around him for a race to go again to try to beheer him from the situation. Because every time as he engages or touches, then he feels slack and he feels he's busy with his position as Koning, further to lose. En dan denk aan die volgende poging wat hy gaan doen. En hierdie keer was het om massas troepen rondom Parijs te stuur, om Parijs dan te beskerm as zulks. Right. Now there's a fear that existed among the people of France. And that was that the king would try to overturn the development that was already made by the National Assembly. So geweldige vrees van die mense by Fran van Frankrijk. Hulle het gevoel hulle het al reeds so baie bereik sonder enige bloedvergieting, en dat sodra, so, soos wat die koning anhou om nieuwe idees uit te dink om sy positie te beskerm, is hy eindelijk een bedreiging, en um, dat die moendlikheid bestaan dat die vordering wat hulle gemaakt het, net so verloren sal gaan, solang as wat die koning gaan anhou om te probeer. So then, um, we start with the immediate cause of the French Revolution, and this is regarded the storming of the Bastille. On 14 July 1789, and this is still as a celebrated day in France annually, um, they gathered in a great crowd to look for guns and ammunition to protect themselves. First, they raided the Invalides and got firearms, but very little gunpowder, gunpowder and bullets. Now, the Invalides were old retired soldiers, um, people who got injured, who lived um, in, a, in a specific place um, the, where people would actually take care of them. And for the Afrikaans people, this is actually interesting because remember that we also have a French heritage in South Africa with the um, French um, Huguenots that came to South Africa. and. Um, I don't know if you heard the, the word in Afrikaans as well, where people speak about invalides, um, and this is where it actually comes from. Um, so they got very little firearms and very little gunpowder and bullets and so forth from the, the invalides, and then they decided to storm the Bastille. Now, the building that you see there in the background of this slide basically um, was a symbol of oppression. If you remember back to my previous session, we talked about the absolute rulership of King Louis the 16th. And one example was the letter, letters de Cachet, that he could issue the arrest of someone without proof, without any valid reasons, and um, they could be imprisoned for minor crimes. 
Now, the Bastille was a prison that most of people that received or were arrested with the letters of the cachet was kept within the Bastille. So this was seen by many people as a symbol of oppression because the captives within the, the um, Bastille were mostly there for very minor crimes or crimes they did not even commit or um, where there's no proof of something um, and, and so forth, right? So they killed the governor and then they paraded with his head on a stick in the streets. This event is then viewed as the immediate cause of the French Revolution. Now, before they went into the Bastille and they killed the government and so forth, there was already a lot of fighting alongside the, the Bastille between the soldiers of Paris, of the king, obviously the people trying to defend the Bastille, and then obviously the people trying to, to say that change needs to take place. Good. So the 14 de July 1789 is now nog in France a baie belangrike gebeurtenis. Dit word nog steeds jaarliks in France gevier, ach, in Frankrijk gevier. Um, weer eens het hulle besluit die mense op die invalides eerste aan te val, so dat hulle kan vier wapens kraam hulle self te beskerm. Maar daar aangekom het hulle nie vreselik baie ammunitie en cool en sikke goeders gekry nie en hulle toe besluit om die bastel aan te val. Weer eens, die bastel was een symbool van onderdrukking geweest. want baie mense wat die letters te kasjai gekry het wat gearresteer is sonder enige geldige rede is of wat ook al is in die bastel aangehou. So dit is gesien als een symbool van onderdrukking. Nou daar was gevechten geweest, dis in die soldaten geweest, daar was gevechten geweest. Um, en my, hulle het uiteindelik in die bastel ingegaan, hulle die gouverneer gearresteer, hulle het om toe nou um, doodgemaak, hulle het met sy kop op een stok rondgeparadeer in die, in die straten, net om een punt te bewys dat hulle baie ernstig is oor die revolusie en dat verandering moet plaasvind. <laughs> Sorry. So there you can see the Bastille building. Looks very much again like a medieval castle. A great symbol of oppression to the people of France. And then in the front, you can see the cannons, you can see people fighting, obviously the soldiers of King Louis the 16th with the revolutionaries wanting change to take place. Okay, so eventually they were able to get access into the Bastille. They held the governor captured and then they obviously beheaded him and they walked with his head on a stick in the streets. Very serious message for the king that they wanted changes and they wanted the revolution to continue and the king should not stand in their way. Another important event of the French Revolution is the abolition of feudal rights and privileges. Right, so the king now feared his own people and he informed the National Assembly that he ordered his soldiers to withdraw from Paris. So obviously the king now decided the people of France are very serious about changes taking place. Um, and obviously not being a strong leader started to fear his own people. Right. Another problem that still existed in France is that bread was still very expensive. Remember the third estate, most of these people are in poverty. Um, this is a stable food for them. Um, they need access to bread for survival and so forth, but there's a huge shortage of bread in France. Remember in the previous session, we also discussed that there was a drought in France simultaneously. Riots broke out all over France with some killings also taking place. And then there was also a fear in France that aristocrats and foreign powers will intervene to try and stop the revolution. Fear led to many protests where peasants took the law into their own hands and attacked castles and manor houses. As a reaction to public unrest, the third estate abolished 
all feudal rights and privileges. Because remember, the 30 state was now in a in a very powerful position in France regarding the calling of the Estates General and then, then changing to the National Assembly. Good. So the Quinning was now bang for the IMI and the GVS had seen what the state is. And um, I done for the national vergadering like Viet that I said so that the uh, untrack it at Paris. Uit. Um, a problem that he is in Frankrijk was that brood ongelooflijk dier was, and that was ook a droogte geweest wat in Frankrijk geheers het, en oorals was daar betoogings in Frankrijk gewees, want mense was verschrikkelijk ongelukkig gewees. Daar was moorde gewees in Frankrijk, waar mense doodgemaak is in conflict situaties. In Frankrijk was daar ook nou een vrees, dier die gewone mense dat oor seese lande gaan ingryp. Want onthou baie Europese lande was, um, het, het maar uit koninklikke sin goed ook bestaan, wat mag gehad het om aan te val, En um, hulle was net bang dat die revolutie wat hulle so ver bereik het, gestop sou word en hulle wou dit beskerm het. Okay. So dit het geleid tot meer en meer betoogings, vooral dan dier kleinboere ook en baie van die mense begin om reg in eie hande te neem en baie van die kastele en die um, heershuise is dan ook aangeval um, dier die derde standse mense. En die derde standse oplossing tot die probleme was om dan weg te doen met alle feudale rechte en voorrechte. En dat basis dat mense gelijk gesien word in, in een samenleving en dat wat, wat vir een geld geld dan basis vir ander persoon ook. Okay. Number five, the declaration of the rights of man. Now, this sounds very familiar to the Declaration of Independence from the American War of Independence. Um, so again, this is the idea that many of the French got from the American War of Independence. <coughs> Sorry. Remember that um, ideas like liberty, equality, brotherhood, um, those ideas, they all got from the American War of Independence. Okay, now the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen was adopted by the National Assembly in August 1789. This was a very revolutionary document. This acknowledged the national, uh, the natural rights of all men. And I underline the men because this is important to note, even in Napoleon Bonaparte's um, ruling after the French Revolution, where a form of democracy was achieved, but this was still only applicable to men in society. Women were not part of this, and slaves were not part of this, and there were still groups that were excluded from this type of democracy, from these types of freedom. Right. So the rights of all men, including liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression, as well as the equality of all men, right? Also the right to govern from the nation. It's not a position given to a king and a queen by God directly. People should have the right to choose who is going to govern them. Right, so another revolutionary democratic idea um, of the French Revolution, also adopted from the American War of Independence. Then also they demanded freedom of religion and expression, and then tax for all. Now remember, it's not a solution to completely do away with tax, because obviously the country needs an income to provide basic services and so forth for the people. But this time they said that everyone should pay tax and the amount of tax that you pay should be in accordance with your income. That if you receive a low income that you would receive um, pay a minimum of tax. If you receive a huge income, then obviously you will pay a bigger amount of tax, um, which is also very evident in most countries today as well, where you pay tax according to your income. 
the, the governments of countries actually need this money. Um, but then obviously the distribution of um, this must be done on a fair basis. Okay, number six, the removal of the royal family from Versailles. On the 1st of October, 1789, the royal family decided to um, present a great feast to be held at the Palace of Versailles um, in support of the arrival of the soldiers from Flanders. Now, at this time, this was seen as very, very insensitive by the king and the queen um, for the people of France, because obviously there was a shortage of bread in France. People suffered poverty. They suffered hunger in France. And now the royal family wants to, to have this big, great feast at the palace um, for the soldiers. Right. And this obviously upset a lot of people in France. So the verwijderen van die koninklijke familie van Versailles op die 1 oktober 1789 het die koninklijke familie besluit hulle gaan een groot feestmal hou vir soldaten van Vlaanders um, en dit was geag as ongelooflik onsensitief weer die groot meerderheid van die Franse bevolking want het was juist in die tijd waar al geweldige hongersnood was en mense het baie baie gesikkel um, in, in, hulle was honger gewees en hier durf die, die koninklijke familie een groot feestmal hou, waar daar seker baie kost in aangeval gemors gaan word ook. So sit, citizens view this feast as insensitive to the needs of the people of France. And then on the morning of 5 October, ordinary women gathered in Paris shouting for bread. They decided to march to Versailles to petition the king for support. And then the women demanded to see the king and after meeting with a group of women, the king agreed to give them all bread. Good. So op die ochend van 5 oktober het gewone vrouwens van die derde stand besluit om na Parijs toe te gaan um, en geroep vir brood, hulle soek brood. Hulle het besluit um, om eerder dan te masseer of um, een optocht te hou na die paleis van Versailles, om dan te betoog by die koning self. En um, die koning het toe besluit om met een groepie vrouwe te vergader, en hy het toe toegestem dat hy vir hulle allemaal brood sal gee. Now in brackets I put the legend, give them cake, um, that Marie Antoinette was on the um, porch there, and she said to the, the women that... Um, Give them, give them all cake to eat. Okay, that's not really what happened. It's a legend that developed from word of mouth. Um, this is actually not something that happened. Um, the queen never said that to the to the people that um, they should get um, cake. Okay, removal of the royal family continue. At about 11 o'clock at night, a group of 20,000 men from the National Guard then marched to Versailles, and they now demanded the king's presence in France. <clears throat> so many of them had enough. Right. The king agreed to now accept the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, which he previously ignored and refused. So the king started to feel very intimidated. Um, you can imagine if 20,000 men are marching to the palace um, and there's, after talking to the women who are angry and they wanted bread, and now the men um, arriving at the palace and um, obviously then decided, okay, okay, I will sign um, and, and accept this, this declaration of the rights of man and citizen, feeling quite threatened. The palace was broken into then by a mob and the king finally agreed the next afternoon to go with his family to Paris. So the mob attacked the palace and then obviously held them captive for a while until the king decided with his family that they will now go to Paris to meet with the people. Okay. So the koninklijke familie was nog steeds by die paleis van Versailles en omtrent 11 uur in die aand die 20,000 mans van die nationale garde um, gemasseer na Versailles toe en hulle het aangedring om um, dat die koning moet, moet gaan na, na Parijs toe waar 
hulle beter met hom kan praat. Dan die, het die koning het uiteindelijk die verklaring van mensenrechten en voorrechten aanvaar, waar hy dit voor je nie wou aanvaar nie, want hij was geweldig geïntimideerd geweest dier hierdie gebaar van die 20.000 mans. Die kastel, en ek dink hy het ook nogal begin bang voel op hierdie stadium, en um, toe het een groep mense inge, ingebreek by die paleis, die koning hulle so'n bykie gevangen gehou daar, tot die koning en sy familie die volgende middag besluit het, hulle sal wel na Parijs toe gaan, om met die mense te praat of hulle te ontmoet. Ok, then number 7, the royal flight to Verines. The National Assembly implemented a number of reforms. Right, now King Louis XVI was now King of the French, not the King of France anymore, according to the National Assembly. So his position has changed. They don't want him as the King of France. Um, so this was now a lower position for the King. He now had to rule under the constitution only. So measures were also taken against the church. The land of the church was then nationalized and sold to, to the people. This made the Roman Catholic Church very weak. And this also divided the members. Because remember, you had one level of clergy who was the who included the cardinals and the bishops and the important people in the Roman Catholic Church and then obviously on the other side you had the the lesser people who worked in the Roman Catholic Church who actually served the people right so now this divided also the people because a lot of the people who were um, corrupt who received a lot of money previously and so forth for the church would be against this but then other people who followed the true calling of their position within the clergy actually accepted this and this caused a lot of division um, between the, the Roman Catholic Church. So the national vergadering had a few um, hervormings implemented Koning Lodewijk die 16 het nou die koning van die Franse geword en hy het sy posiesie as die koning van Frankrijk verloor. En die nationale vergadering het nou basis gesê, hy moet nou um, heers onder die grondwet wat hulle opgestel het. Raag, hy, hy is nie meer een absolute heerser van Frankrijk wat net kan doen wat hy wil nie. Hy val nou onder die stelsel, onder die grondwet wat opgestel is. Raag. Nou, stap is ook geneem dier die nationale vergadering om die Rooms-Katholieke Kerkse gronde te verwijder. So, die gronde is genationaliseer en dit is dan ook verkoop aan mense. Uh, so, en dit het ook baie verdeling veroorzaak um, onder die mense van die Rooms-Katholieke Kerk, die wat voor je een baie macht gehad het, wat um, geld gekry het, wat, wat baie corrupt was in die kerk, was um, teen dit gewees, Maar um, dan ook, excuse for die, maar dan ook um, die Rooms-Katholieke kerk was dan ook baie um, swak gewees en verdeel, want aan die ander kant het jy ander lede van die Rooms-Katholieke kerk gehad, wat nie so sterk was nie, um, wat, wat dienst wou gelever het aan die mense, wat het dan verwelkom het. King Louis XVI was a committed Catholic, and this made him very, very upset. He decided to flee with his family to seek assistance from Austria. And then the leader of Austria was Emperor Leopold II. Now that was also the brother of King Louis XVI's wife, Marie Antoinette. Now, remember that when royalty existed in Europe during the Middle Ages, um, a lot of royalty decided to to marry with royalty from other countries to keep the royal positions within Europe right um, so this is also just one example to to keep the the relationships between the various European countries strong and going on right so King Louis the 16th decided to to flee with his wife and his children to um, Austria to ask for assistance from the Emperor of um, Austria. The only got as far as Verines, this actually, actually far, where the king was then recognized and he was stopped. 
So Koning Lodewijk die 16e uh, was een baie toegeweide katholiek geweest. En um, dit het onverschrikkelijk ontstel dat die grondgebied van die Roomse katholieke kerk weggeneem is. En hij het dan besluit om met zijn familie te vlug naar Oostenrijk toe. Um, en dan te ontmoet met keizer Leopold II. Nou dit was die broer geweest van Marie Antoinette. Nou in Europese landen was dit een ding geweest dat koninklijk is ondertrouw het met mekaar om die machtsposities en koninklijke posities te, te handhaaf en dan ook om banden te smeet tussen verschillende Europese landen. Goed, hulle het so ver as Verines gekom, um, toe is die koning geïdentificeer en uitgeken en hulle is gestop en hulle is dan terug vergesel na Parijs toe. So, jy so in die achtergrond van die um, slide, in the background of the slide, you can see the soldiers, escorting the royal family back to, to France, ach, to, back to Paris. Okay, then number eight, the execution of the king. In April 1792, France declared war on Austria as Marie Antoinette's brother Leopold II was completely against the revolution. The people of France wanted to spread the idea of revolution and later also declared war on Prussia. Now, this was actually a very dumb decision by the National Assembly and the 30 state and the new government because obviously they were not prepared for war. Um, they did not make sure they have enough weapons. Obviously, France was still in a, in a bankrupt position at this stage. Um, it was really a dumb decision for them to think that they could actually win against these countries. France was unprepared for war and the people of France feared a counter-revolution. The commander of the Austro-Prussia forces declared that Paris would be destroyed if the royal family was harmed in any way. And this actually led to the opposite effect and this led to violence, right? So in December 1792, the king was put on trial for various crimes against the people of France. And he was then executed by the guillotine on the 21st of January, 1793. Good. So, Frankrijk had the and as ook the um, Oostenrijk, dit was een baie dom idee gewees, want Frankrijk op die stadium was nie um, in een positie om oorlog te verklaar nie. Hulle was nog steeds in armoede gedompel, die land was in een toestand geweest van revolutie, daar was een klomp negatieve dinge wat in hulle, wat tegen hulle getal het. So dit was um, in, een, in een verdoemende positie basis vir die, vir die revolutie gewees, raag. Um, so die bevelvoerder van die Austra, of die Oostenrijkse prijse machten het basis um, een verklaring uitgereik om te sê dat as enige van die leden van die koninklijke familie beseer word, sal dit veroorzaak laat Parijs vernietig word. Um, en dit het eindelijk die teenoorgestelde effect op die Franse gehad en dit het net geleid tot meer geweld um, in Parijs en Frankrijk as solks. Goed. In december 1792 het hulle die koning op um, verhoor laat gaan en hy is dan skuldig bevind aan een klomp misdade tegen die mense van Frankrijk wat tegen die nieuwe grondwet gegaan het en hy is dan terheggestel dier die valbuil of die guillotine op die 21ste januari 1793. So om baie seker te maak laat die ander lande nie vinnig um, besluiten kan neem ten opzichte nie stel die koning te raag. Okay, now this is the gory part that most learners like, um, coming to the French Revolution, and this is the guillotine or the default bail. Now, this was a new method of execution that was considered as more humane um, in comparison with a firing squad that might not instantly kill people or hanging people um, that might not instantly kill people. So um, this was then developed by a doctor whose surname was Guillotine, um, who actually um, thought of this as being more humane because this 
which and then just fall on the neck of the person, cutting it straight off, going immediately through all the nerves, um, then obviously the person will not feel any pain. Now, this also became an issue of debate for many, many years afterwards, because people would say that um, this was not humane because people could apparently still see for a few seconds um, after the, the heads have been um, chopped off that they could still see and, and still be aware until the oxygen of the brain was completely cut off. But um, you will see, let me just get a tool there, that this is the plank on which they laid, right? So this plank could go upright and a person would be fastened to this plank in an upright position and then it would be lowered, right? So the head will then be fastened within a block so that the person just cannot move. And then you will see the sharp blade there. And obviously on demand of a person there, the blade would fall and the head would fall into that basket over there. And then just to install fear in the general public, this was done in public. This was seen as a form of public entertainment at the time. And then obviously they would parade with the heads of the people just to install fear in people as well, that um, they should avoid certain crimes, um, etc. Right. Um, so this is then also the way that King Louis the 16th was killed. Now, this method of execution even lasted in the 1970s in France um, until it was declared um, that execution was not an option anymore, right? So it still continued for a while after it was introduced. Right, the reign of terror and the execution of the queen. Now, the Queen was also put on trial without any proof of accused crimes. She was then also executed by the guillotine on the 16th of October, 1793. So remember, the King was executed in January and then the Queen was executed in October. She died with a lot of dignity. So the Queen is work for her sooner that enige bewijse was for the misdaden waarvoor sy um, beskuldig is nie. Um, sy is dan ook gestuur om doodgemaak te word dier die, die valbeil op die 16 oktober 1793. En sy het met baie menswaardigheid gesterf. Sy het selfs voor haar dood het sy onverskoning gevra vir die mense van Frankrijk vir die misdaden. So before her death, she actually um, asked the people for forgiveness for um, what she has done. Right. Now, her son was the next heir um, of France. He was imprisoned. Um, and then he also, he was treated extremely bad in prison. And he later died of tuberculosis at the age of 10. Good, so Marie Antoinette and Lodewijk the 16, this is seen, where the following opvolger was, is in the tronk gegooi. There was verschrikkelijke slechte toestanden daar geweest. En hy is later dood aan tuberculose op die ouderdom van 10. Sy dote Marie Therese um, survived. She was um, sent to live in exile outside of France, um, obviously with the option of never returning to France again. So die dochter Marie Therese het oorleef. Sy is gesteer um, om buiten die weike van Frankrijk te leef. En um, obviously kon sy nou nie weer terugkom na Frankrijk toe nie. The Committee of Public Safety now unleashed a reign of terror, and Afrikaans noem ons die skrik bewind, under the leadership of Maximilian de Robespierre. Right. Now, Maximilian de Robespierre, a prosecutor, obviously started a reign of terror. And this was where a lot of people that was just on year say, maybe against the revolution, um, decapitated by the guillotine. Um, people started to live in extreme terror and fear in France under Maximilian de Robespierre. Because if someone didn't like you, they could just say something 
and you will be the next to be executed as an enemy of the, the new revolution. Um, then at, at one stage, Maximilian de Roepspeer decided to name his enemies in a public declaration. And this obviously um, made him very, very unpopular with the people of the French Revolution. And then Maximilian de Robespierre himself was then decapitated by the, the guillotine itself. Now, this whole um, reign of terror is discussed in the focus textbook. If you use another textbook, just look at the, the specific um, section. Um, so page 101 in the focus textbook, where you can read all about the, the period of fear and terror until Robespierre himself was executed. Right. So what is important to know is that during the reign of terror, a lot of people, most of them innocent, um, executed by the guillotine, um, a lot of terror and fear in Paris, because uh, in France as such, because people just did not know who's going to be next to be executed. Um, just, just complete terror. Uh, so in Afrikaans, this is script bewind, and you have a verkenne handboek, gaan jy van die inlichting kan lees op bladsy 101. Dit was net een tydperk gewees van ongelooflike terreur, um, en gevoelens van ongelooflike vrees, wat in Frankrijk geheers het, um, onder Maximilien de Ruipspeer, want baie mense is net op hoersie, byvoorbeeld, na die guillotine of die valbuil toe gevat, en is ontwoof dier die valbuil. Um, so in daar die tydperk was jy te bang om iets te sê, want verraad was hoog gewees en mense is doodgemaak sonder enige bewys of redes of wat ook al. En um, dit het geëindig waar Maximilian de Ruipspeer sy vijande publiek gemaak het en um, obviously dit dan geleid tot sy eie terechtstelling met die guillotine. Okay, so guys, um, if you have any questions, please make sure that you um, quickly complete that in the question box. Remember, if you were unable to download the documents, please just um, in the question box also send your email address so that we can forward it to you via email. Um, I hope you sincerely enjoyed this. So remember now the first stage we did the um, with the first session we did the causes um, of the French Revolution. For those who did not attend the first time, remember that you can um, download these um, PowerPoint presentations on um, our guided learning platform. Um, then also, um, if you have any queries, other queries, you are welcome to contact us at info at impact.co.za. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and remember that on the second term it is important that we focus on the French Revolution and then also um, if you can now just be able to, to concentrate for now on the causes of the French Revolution and then also the main events of the French Revolution and then later then just end it off with um, revolutionary ideas spreading to other parts of the world. You have the case study of Haiti, and um, then obviously a part of Napoleon Bonaparte implementing the first um, stages of democracy, which is still an old type of democracy. Remember, it still excluded women and slaves and so forth, but a huge step in modernizing democracy in ages to come. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good, good, good day. Bye. Kimberly.